So I believe, is it the 21st of, of February? I think it's the 21st of February. Is that right? Oh, it's the 20th. Sorry. It's the 20th. Somebody asked me one day to start telling us the date. And so that's why I asked. I tried to tell the date and I'm always wrong. So I'm sorry about that. So we are live on both Facebook and YouTube. So welcome, welcome. When you come on, please tell me hello. Tell me how you're doing today and tell me where you're from. If you are coming on to Facebook and you do not see that little red live button in the, in the corner, that means you're watching this video on replay. If you would put hashtag replay in the comments, I would so appreciate that and I can come on and tell you hello. So today we are going to make an arrangement. We have another small party today, um, a little bit smaller than last week's and it's going to be bright colors. And they asked for um, some food table arrangements or larger, more buffet style arrangements. So we're going to make a buffet style arrangement. Um, Victoria is here with me. So she will be able to read the comments on both Facebook and YouTube. So y'all ask me some questions, talk to me. It makes this process so much easier and more fun, honestly. And so um, we are going to start with a plastic container. These are some containers I actually got from Eminem Wholesale. It is a um, wholesale truck. He comes around with his truck. I think he has a website, but I've never ordered off of his website. He always just brings his truck. So this is actually a plastic container. This is the larger. Um, we have two different sizes. This is the larger one, and then we have a smaller one. And the smaller one, I would say, is really small. Um, honestly, I mean, it works great, but it is much smaller than the large. I wish there was one kind of in between, um, but it's a great container. And it comes where the bottom screws on to the container, so they're easy to stack and easy to store. So um, I wanted to show you that I took just some gold spray paint. I can't screw it back on because I'm on, there it goes because I'm on a video and you're never gonna get things right, right? So I took some gold metallic spray paint, Krylon gold metallic spray paint, and I spray painted this container. Now the reason I chose to spray paint this container is I am using some, some compote urn type containers for the centerpieces and they are painted gold. So we decided to go ahead and paint these urns gold also. This is just um, regular spray paint I picked up from Lowe's and um, you just take them outside and spray them real good and it works perfectly. And you can change them any color you'd like. I mean if you wanted them white you can do white. I like that they're kind of a um, stone wash um, but you can change them if, if the need arises and it's just regular spray paint from the Lowe's store. Okay, so I have taken two blocks of fresh floral foam and I have put them in this container. I will fill the reservoir with water. I have um, taken one block and I cut it in half and I put half of the block down in the bottom of this container and then I put a full block on top to raise it up and then to um, to just kind of wedge it in, I took some the other pieces of the other piece I cut in half and tucked it in so that it would kind of wedge that foam and it wouldn't rock and roll. Um, because sometimes it will. Um, so we are going to get started. I will fill this reservoir with water. Anytime you're using fresh floral foam, always try to have a reservoir that you can fill with water because this foam does not hold enough water to sustain the, uh, the flowers. Um, so if you've got a really good reservoir, your flowers will last a long period of time. And so of course this reservoir holds water really, really well. Um, we're gonna start out with some leather leaf foam, I mean greenery foam. What am I talking about? Mm -hmm. Um, you have lots of hellos. Hello guys, welcome. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Um, Darlis Wharton says, my mother passed away last Tuesday. She lived in Virginia, and I went to the local florist and showed them one of your arrangements on Facebook that I loved, and they made it perfectly. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm so sorry about that. 
Valerie McDonald says hello. She says it was, uh, they got some sun there in New York, but it's very, very cold and wants to know how our weather was today. It was actually beautiful today. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure the temp, but it has been beautiful. The birds have been singing and the sun has been shining. It's been a lovely day in Mississippi. Probably, I would say probably the high 60s, um, but really, really, really pretty. Mm -hmm. So nice to have some sunshine. <laughs> Miss Mary, Miss Mary Lou says, hi, Moni, doing good today, how are you? I am wonderful, Miss Mary Lou, thank you for asking. So I'm just taking this, um, this leather leaf and I'm just coming all the way around the base and I'm just tucking it right into that foam. I'm just kind of covering the edge of that base. Um, on YouTube, Louie Turner says, um, hello from Virginia. Hello, hello. Um, Ms. So Carol, glad you're here. Miss Carol says, good afternoon. And Sissy Mar Marino says, excited to see your creation. So glad you're here. Thanks, guys. Thank you for watching over on YouTube. Judy Roder says, I love leather leaf. <laughs> I, I really like it too, Judy. Now, it does... It's kind of like a carnation. Either you like it or you hate it, but I think it's such a good, inexpensive foliage to add to the base um, of any kind of arrangement, and so that's what I really like about it. And it's long-lasting. It lasts a really long time. So what I've done is I've taken that leather leaf and I've gone all the way around that container. So it's weird right now, Owen has flipped my camera and we're using the back camera on um, Facebook. And so I don't get to see myself, so I don't even know what I look like. Yeah. I probably look silly. No. <laughs> when you're so used to looking at yourself, it's strange. Um, so I have got the greenery all the way around. Next, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of Israeli ruscus. So Israeli Ruscus is another inexpensive foliage that I really, really like. It paints beautifully. So if you needed a foliage to be a different color, like maroon to tuck into something, we even got it during the holiday seasons where in the fall, we got it in all the fall tones, reds and yellows and oranges. And then in the winter, like at Christmas time, they were more metallic um, paints. It was beautiful. So. This is just natural. I'm gonna take this and I'm going to tuck it right up here and kind of go all the way around in this container with this Israeli Ruscus. Now, when I tell you it's inexpensive, I mean, it's, it's about two, we get it cheap enough that we can do two stems for a dollar. And we even have gotten it where it was less expensive and we could do three stems for a dollar. Really inexpensive. Um, Miss Catherine Farrington says, just got on. What is this for? Hello, Miss Catherine. This is for a luncheon on Thursday. So we have um, 19 centerpieces and three buffet arrangements. So this is one of the three buffet arrangements. We have lots of people saying they're glad to catch you live today. So glad you're here, guys. Welcome, welcome. So glad y'all are here. So I'm just taking and stripping some of the foliage off the bottom, cutting it with my floral knife, and just tucking it right into that floral foam. Um, Brandy says, a lady told me not to use it because it made her think of funeral arrangements. I never really thought of leather leaf as a big funeral foliage. Never. Honestly, I, I use very little leather leaf in funeral work. I use a lot more jade or palm in, in funeral work than I do leather. Um, but you know, there's always going to be somebody who says a carnation is a funeral flower or a um, glad is a funeral flower. Y'all, we use every flower there is for a funeral. We use lilies and we use daisies and we use hydrangeas. We use all the flowers for funerals. I'm not sure why they people um, have put a stigma on certain flowers and decided those are funeral flowers, but I mm -hmm. think they're all perfect. <laughs> I don't like to say, I like, we use them for all of it. Um, Carlotta asks, who do you get your greens from? Carlotta, I get most of my foliage 
from Budsy. I get most everything from Budsy. Um, for a long time, we got a lot of our foliage out of Florida from um, Tom's Greens, um, but I decided to change um, and I'm using Budsy for most all of our, um, for most everything. We get our leather leaf from Budsy, we get um, jade. Now we have gotten it from, um, gosh, I can't think of the name. I've gotten a few things um, from a lady named Silvana, but I cannot think of the name of the company. I'll have to look. Um, but Budsy has provided me with all my leather, with my jade, with Robolini, with all of my eucalyptus that you ever see, all comes from Budsy. And so we just get most everything that we get, we get from Budsy. So this is a white hydrangea. And this is a fun color um, palette. They wanted really fun colors. So I'm gonna take these white hydrangeas and I'm going to tint them with Just for Flowers um, Fresh Green. So I just take that hydrangea and I'm just going to pop it with a little bit of fresh green paint or fresh green. It's actually a transparent floral flower dye. Quick drying, fresh flowers safe. And it's called Fresh Green. We get a lot of our um, floral paints or tints from um, Burton & Burton. Um, I have ordered them from other places, but Burton & Burton is usually, they have the um, largest selection. You know, after COVID, we struggled a little bit finding things during COVID because of course you struggled mightily finding anything um, in supply relation during COVID. And so we found that um, Burton & Burton really has the largest selection. So we buy most of those floral paints from them or tents. Um, Charles and Cheryl. Um, Cheryl's from London, Ohio. And oh, well they both say that it's their first time catching you live. Hello guys, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so thankful y'all are here. Maria wants to know where Mr. Superstar is today. Um, I think Toot Toot's in there he's in right. the chair. Oh, he's under he's under the table right beside Victoria. I thought he was in the back in the design room back there. <laughs> he stayed out all night last night, so he has slept hard today. So I am just taking that hydrangea and I'm kind of fluffing him up just a little bit. I'm taking that floral tint and just popping it just a little bit. I'm not getting too heavy with the um, tint. Floral knife, cut it at an angle and I'm dipping it in a quick dip solution. Quick dip is just a hydrating solution that helps to keep our flowers, especially hydrangeas, hydrated. So you can see I'm just kind of going all the way through. Um, your mama's watching. Hello, my mama, how are ya? Mm -hmm. Chastity says, Moni, would a hydrangea last in a bridal bouquet? I know they are thirsty, but I worry about them in a June wedding. Um, it's hot in June in Mississippi. I don't know how hot it is in other places, but it is quite warm. I do use them as a base flower um, often in, in um, bridal work, um, but I'll try to, I tr my words won't come, I apologize. I always try to tell um, the bride and the bridesmaids that between taking pictures and walking down the aisle, please, please, please drop them back in their vases of water. So I do most of my flowers as hand tied bouquets. Um, and not at, in a bouquet holder like I think in my lifetime doing bridal bouquets I probably used a bouquet holder twice um, but so I usually do them in a hand tied where their stems are showing and I will just take them and um, and I don't wrap all the way down that stem I usually leave enough that it's going to hit the water and I just try to warn the girls that they need to be in water as much as possible. Um, Louis Turner um, says, even purple they told me is funeral, and why do you why do you remove the leaves on the hydrangeas? Um, 
purple is funeral? That's so strange to me. Now, I could see, I'll tell you about the leaves in just a second. Mm -hmm. I could see it being another culture. You know, a lot of times, and because I don't know a whole lot about the different cultures, a lot of times when you're talking about different cultures, color is very important in certain cultures. Right, Victoria? I know, um, I don't know. I'm not going to even start, but... What were you thinking? Well, I had heard like even for weddings, like in different like a, cultures, the colors, the colors, different things. yeah, colors are very important and that kind of thing. But in the United States, we are not picky about color. I think that's just I think who you are talking to just happens to have um, <laughs> thoughts about different things being related to funerals. And so, um, yeah, I would never, I never would hang my hat on that. Don't worry about color. It's always in the preference of the family and what was the person's favorite color. Like we've got a um, funeral on Saturday, all shades of purple with pretty greens and whites. Um, and so, and it's gonna be beautiful. Um, so it's just, I think that um, whoever you were speaking with has a hang up about color and a hang up about the types of flowers. So I would never worry about that um, because we use purple in flower arrangements all the time. Um, so I would never worry about that. As for taking the foliage off of the hydrangea, the reason I took the foliage off the hydrangea is because it has this long stem and the water when they, when it's just like a straw. Um, when you stick that stem down in water and it goes to drink that water, um, that water goes to the, to the leaves first. And so if you'll remove those leaves, then that water goes straight to the head. Now I, you, I only do that with a hydrangea. I really like the foliage left on flowers. And I would love to leave the foliage on these hydrangeas, but I know that if I remove it, it's, it's more likely that my flowers will get more hydrated and keep their um, form and their shape and stay pretty versus leaving the foliage on and the water going straight to the foliage first. They don't get quite as hydrated. So that's the reason I pulled that off. All right, the next flower we're going to put in is some blue delphinium. So we're gonna use lots of color in this arrangement. So we're gonna use some blue delphinium. Delphinium is a line flower. And of course you see that it's very linear. It's very straight up. So we, can, we call this a line flower. Now the hydrangea is a focal flower or a mass flower. And so you can see when I call it a mass, it's taking up a lot of space and it's, it's kind of a face. You see him as a kind of a round mass there. Um, so I'm going to take my delphinium, and they're going to go kind of, kind of right in the middle there. I'm going to take my floral knife, and I'm going to cut that stem at an angle, and I'm going to press him right down into that floral foam. Now let me say, when you go to use these flowers and tuck them in this floral foam, be sure that you stick it down in the foam pretty deep, um, because you don't want to very easily tug it out. I mean, you don't want to very easily touch it and it come out because it will fall out during delivery and if I'm not the one delivering Jason doesn't do flowers so he would not know where it needs to go. Um, Valerie McDonald says I'm so glad to hear that you are getting an early spring. We had a northeast northeastern snowstorm last Sunday and and um, I'm sorry I'm stuttering. And the snow is finally melting, but it's very, very cold here in New York. Oh, yes. I can imagine it's very chilly. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, I honestly, it gets so hot here in the summer. And I know it gets hot in New York. Um, we've been to New York City in the, at the 4th of July, and I promise you it's as hot in New York City during the 4th of July mm -hmm. as it is in Mississippi. I mean, it's that miserable. <laughs> so you get the heat, but your heat is, I guess yours is not quite as long as our heat is. Stephen Duncan says, hello ladies from Fort Myers. Glad you survived the big B day as we did. That was a long 74 hour, hours last week and still going with parties and weddings. I think it's time for a vacation. I know, we need to run away, don't we? We need to run away. Um, this is called stock. Sock comes in lots of colors. Um, 
I love the purple color and speaking of funeral color, mm -hmm. um, I love this pretty um, purple and I thought it would be beautiful mixed in with the blues and the greens and we're going to use some reds and pinks, um, but just a really pretty. Now I would consider stock a line flower also. You see it's very linear, but it's I almost call it a little chunky. It's a little chunkier of mm -hmm. a line flower than say the delphinium. It's more of a slender line flower. We're gonna tuck some of this um, purple stock in. So I'm just taking that floral knife and cutting that stem at an angle. And we're just going to nestle this stock kind of all the way around. Um, Melinda asks, do you leave the plastic sleeve on your hydrangeas in the cooler until you are ready to use them? I do. I do. So we have, um, our cooler has metal walls and so they get pretty cold. And when you tuck those hydrangeas on the, um, we have shelving units in our cooler, and when you tuck those hydrangeas on the shelves, they're going to touch the wall. And their flowers are a little tender, like the little blooms on a hydrangea are a little tender. And so we have found leaving those sleeves on those hydrangeas helps to keep them from blistering in that cooler. And so we do leave the, um, the sleeves on those hydrangeas. Um, Joe Bathurst says, Hi, Monty. Good to see you here in the UK. Can I ask, do you bash the end of the stems? I see others do this. I have never bashed the end of a stem of any flower. Um, and it was never taught in floral design school um, when we were taught to um, process flowers. And so I always wondered where it came from. I wondered where the bashing came from. Um, now, I have been in the industry since 96, so a long time, and it was never taught to me to bash the stem, so I don't. Um, but I, I, like you, have seen others bash the stems. Next, we're going to use a little thistle. Um, on YouTube, the crepuscule <laughs> you can't say the word. So you sorry. have been so giggly today. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Every time Owen said, <laughs> what action? Uh, Owen and Victoria have been working on um, videos today. And so Owen would say, okay, Victoria, action. <laughs> and Victoria would giggle every single I time. Not, I don't know why. It's so funny. So this is blue thistle. And thistle is, some people call it a weed. And I am all about some weeds. If, if this is a weed, I want it. Um, but it is kind of, I love the texture of the blue thistle. It's just kind of spidery. It's just a fun texture. That one's huge. Isn't that one big? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, I'm going to struggle with this. The crepuscular crep musketeers okay. on YouTube says this arrangement is beautiful. I can see it already forming. Thank um, you, thank you. They say, my favorite flowers, and I've bashed the ends of hydrangeas. Okay, so tell me, though, why? Why do you bash it? Exactly what does it, what does it do? What, what is the advantage of bashing the flowers? So I have always been told that if you damage that end, no, I'm not talking about a hydrangea in particular, all the flowers. It's just like a straw. And so if we damage that end or it gets clogged or any of the things, it will not drink the water. So tell me what's the advantage. I might, we should do an experiment, <laughs> shouldn't we? Because that would be fun to do. Mm -hmm. We could do an exper experiment where we do just a regular cut and drop it in water with the leaves on, and then a quick dip dropped in water, and then bashing the stems and dropped in water, and just study. That would be fun. Yeah. We'll do that. We'll work on that experiment. <laughs> Okay, a little bit of solidago. We're gonna tuck our solidago in. Now with this, this is a big stem of solidago. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my finger and I'm just holding it, I'm holding that thumbnail right against that um, stem. And I'm just gonna pop it just like that. And I'm gonna nestle. So it gives me two stems to work with. Um, Miss Ruth asks, how many days approximately does hydrangeas la do hydrangeas last even with the quick dip? It's always going to vary on um, 
how well their flowers are taken care of. Um, so it, that's always going to be a huge factor in their longevity is how well they're taken care of. And what I mean by that is, are they changing that water daily? Are they recutting those stems and all that? So honestly, um, I do not know the exact um, length of life um, on a hydrangea, but we will do a, an experiment and find out. I don't take a lot of hydrangeas home. Honestly, I don't take a lot of flowers home. Now, I send them home with Victoria a lot and with Maggie and thing, and I take them to Mama. Um, but I don't take them home a lot. And a lot of it is because I just hate to throw them away. <laughs> and I, I play with them all day, every day. So, um, Marlene says, I got my devotional book yesterday and I can't wait to get started on it. I took a peek at the first story. I'm so excited. Yes, I am too. I am too, Marlene. I'm so excited. Okay, so there's our solidago, and you can see I just kind of separated it and tucked um, two pieces instead of just one. Did we go dark already? Gosh, I've been talking too much and not working. All right, so we got our solidago in. Next, we're going to do some Gerber daisies, but I did not bring any wire. So let me go grab um, some wire. take so our Gerber daisies um, come with these um, chartreuse colored straws and honestly I would probably use straws if they were not this bright green but when you leave that on there it just draws your eye to that straw so I don't leave them on. Um, I am going to take a florist wire 21 gauge that we've cut in half. I'm going to press it right into the disc of that flower and I'm gonna wrap it right around the stem. Now, I can remember when I first started in floral design, we would feed that wire right down into the stem, but that is far too much work. So I don't do that. <laughs> I just put it in that disc and wrap it around that stem just like that. And so we're going to tuck these bright colored Gerberas um, Rhea Norman says there was a lady I follow on Twitter or whatever it's called now. Um, she showed a picture of her roses that had drooping heads. I told her to make sure she cut her stems at an angle and to get some florist wire and push it into the calyx of the rose and wrap it around. Then change the water every other day. Sounds familiar. <laughs> Look at you. You sound like a florist, Rhea. <laughs> Um, Charles asks, how long should this arrangement last? As long as it's well watered. Um, and this, again, is for an event. So they are not likely going to care for it like we would at home, right? Um, it should last days. The only thing about floral containers such as this that have fresh floral foam in them, people forget that they need water. Um, when you don't see the water line, you forget they need water and you don't remember to water. So before we deliver, we will make sure that the reservoir is really, really full um, so that it will last. I would say it's going to last five to seven days as long as it's well watered. Um, Gail Richard Smith that one. asks, how could you, oh, that yellow. He's happy, mm -hmm. isn't he? He's he a is. sweet little guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miss Gail asks, how could you insert the flowers if the ends are bashed? That's what I was wondering, Miss Gail. I'm not sure. I agree. Again, I have never done that. So I don't know. Um, Allison says, yes, I've heard a lot of people smash the stems, and I keep seeing people say they dip the stems in boiling water, too. Yes, and I just can't imagine that that's very good for its little system, the boiling water. But I have seen it. I have. But I didn't. I, it's strange. And again, I'm not saying that I'm up to date on how to process flowers, maybe. Um, but that just has never been taught to me. Um, so we might should do some research. Um, the crap, crap thing. Yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry for, <laughs> for me mispronouncing your name. Um, and it's a cute name. I just can't. Your words all come up, will it? Um, the crap, who, who, who's 
Muscular Musketeers says it was supposed to help, quote unquote, the flowers suck up the water. I started floral design in 1985. I absolutely love your channel. Oh, I'm so thankful you're Thank you so much for watching. Okay, so I put some fun little Gerberas all the way through. Honestly, do I need to move, I need to move him a little bit. Um, Sandra Haney asks, why is it called stock? I have no idea. I'm not sure. He's not coming out. I got him in good. <laughs> like, he's not coming. Okay, he's saying. Okay, he's very happy there. Okay, these are Cremones. I'm not sure how they, how stock got its name, but it is pretty. And stock comes in lots of colors. It comes in a fuchsia and this purple. It comes in a soft lavender. It comes in, what other colors? A, um... A, a soft lemon color. We, I call it butter, um, but it's really called lemon. It comes in a um, mauve, which is so pretty. Lots and lots of pretty colors. These are cremones. These cremones have a sweet, I love the little kiss of green on these cremones. So we're going to take them. So cremones are in the chrysanthemum family, and this is called um, a disbud, where it's just the single bud that is on the um, flower. And I don't know if I want him so far down in those. He's kind of shedding. Um, Tammy Moon Miller says, bashing a woody stem gives more area for it to get water, but just a woody stem. Okay, so would you consider, I wouldn't consider a hydrangea a woody stem, would you? Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't have, I, I like, to me, eucalyptus is very woody, right? Like, seeded eucalyptus is a very hard, woody stem. But I wouldn't consider a hydrangea a woody stem. It's a softer stem. Thank you, everyone, for the for those of you who have said nice things about my arrangement. That was very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Which one? The pink one? Um, or the one you did the video on? I suppose the... The... Um, the hand bouquet? The hand yes, bouquet. yes, the one that you posted today. All right, there are our cremones that I tucked in. We've got some buttons, some yellow buttons. Now, I love a button. A button is a type of mom, um, a chrysanthemum. It is a spray. So what I mean by a spray is it's got several little buds or several blooms on one flower. Um, I can remember working with one little girl um, she hated button moms, and I thought that is the saddest thing I've mm -hmm. ever heard that you would hate a button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I've always really enjoyed buttons. Now, button moms come in lots of fun colors. They come in lavenders and yellows, whites and greens, so lots of pretty colors. So I'm just taking, and I am stripping that foliage off. Now, the reason I'm stripping the foliage off is because it's not necessary to keep on it, and I'm going to cut the stem kind of short. Um, but you can certainly leave some of the foliage on if you want to, but I just go ahead and strip that foliage, cut that stem at an angle, and nestle him right down into that foam. Rona Voss says, I thought if you bash the flower that it causes bacteria to grow. I'm not sure. Um, Vicki V says, hello. Hello. Um, she's watching. She says, finally catching you live from Mel Melbourne, Australia. Welcome, friend. So glad you're here. Um, Soon Tornthita is watching from That's Thailand. A pretty name. Welcome. Welcome. So glad you're here, Thailand. Wow. Mm -hmm. And Suzanne is watching today from Denmark. Hello, Suzanne. So glad you're here. So these are called Alstroemeria lilies, or Peruvian lilies, they're also called. Now, Alstros are very long-lasting lilies. They are non-fragrant, meaning they do not have any pretty fragrance, um, but they come in lots and lots of colors. Now, one of the longer-lasting blooms is an Alstro. Alstros are really, really long-lasting and come in so many pretty colors that they work really well in flower arrangements. Another thing is, I don't know why this is, but longer lasting blooms tend to be less expensive, and that's strange to me, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because an Alstroemeria lily is fairly inexpensive. I mean, we charge $2 a stem for an Alstro. Carnations, very long lasting, very inexpensive. Um, Daisy Moms, very long lasting, very inexpensive. So it's interesting to me that the longer lasting blooms 
are the least expensive. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. And they're all bold colors. Lots of pretty colors. All of those flowers come in lots of color. Um, Vicki Seal asks, how do you fresh cut the stems without dismantling the arrangement? Now, this arrangement, you couldn't. So this will be one of those that you're not going to be able to give a fresh cut. Um, because everything is designed down in floral foam, and therefore it would, it would be literally impossible to try to recut these stems. The main thing, and I just shattered that, Mom. That's no fun. I'll go get a new one. Um, the main thing is, is just be sure that you keep the reservoir filled with water. Um, but yeah, this type of a, an arrangement, anything that is arranged in floral foam would not get a fresh cut. Um, Rhonda Hilton says the blue thistle here in Australia is called Sea Folly. It's lovely. Sea Folly, that's a pretty name. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. I did have one person say one time, that is a weed. <laughs> Why are you using weeds? But Solidago is weeds too. <laughs> Solidago Aster is definitely a weed. I love weeds. Oh, Miss Joanne says it's Sea Holly. Sea Holly. Either so way, it's pretty. pretty. I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay, next we're going to come in with some berries. We have some Hypericum berries. Now, Hypericum berries are also called coffee berries. They come in tons of color. Um, reds and coral and pinks and whites and greens, but lots of pretty color. I love the texture of berries in an arrangement, um, and so that's why I like to use those. Ms. Cheryl says, Monty, this arrangement is just beautiful. Makes me want my flowers to come on in my yard, but oh. winter is not over for Ohio. Yes, but I tell you, I have to be one of those that has to, um, to hold back before I plant. Um, I get too excited when we start having warmer days and I'm so ready to plant flowers. And then I think come August and September, I am so ready for these flowers to die so I don't have to water them anymore. <laughs> so it's kind of dang if you do and dang if you don't. Um, but yes, I agree. I get in too much of a hurry. Rhea Norman says, a weed is just a plant in the wrong place. That's right. A beautiful, beautiful plant. Okay. So, the flowers we used, and next I'm going to put in some greenery, but the flowers we used include um, the white hydrangeas that I tinted green. Now, here at our flower shop, we usually only buy white. Um, and the reason is, is because if you have enough flower tint, you can paint them any color in the rainbow. So I am a huge, huge um, lover of some flower paint. Now, I know that there are people that are like, I don't know why you would ever do that, but this saves a lot of money. Um, so we have white hydrangeas, we tinted green. Blue delphinium is my line flower. Purple stock. Um, Gerbera daisy, several different colors of Gerberas. Um, we have reds and oranges and yellows in our Gerberas. Um, yellow buttons, which is a mum, chrysanthemum. We have the disc buds, which are kind of white with a green kiss. Um, Alstros, which are pink, a pretty pink Alstro. Um, thistle, blue thistle. Um, peachy colored Hypericum berries. Solidago. And that's it, right? Um, the greenery was leather leaf and Israeli ruscus. And we're going to add a little bit of seeded eucalyptus and we're going to call it pretty. So we got all this pretty seeded eucalyptus. This is actually all of the foliage that you see in this arrangement. Everything, everything in this arrangement came from Budsy, which is a company that we get flowers direct from. So 98% that just pinched the fire out of me. He didn't cut me, but he pinched me. 98% um, of all the flowers that we have are from Budsy. Yeah, he just pinched. But he pinched me good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Julie says, our Gerberas always came with the bright green straws and I always replace them too. Yeah, I don't know why they're so green. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the people who put those straws on realize that they are really unusable. Um, Lois Ann asks if you can use chlorinated water from the faucet. We do. We use water from the faucet, yes. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm just taking this greenery and I'm just going all the way around the lip of that container. And you can see it's really covering up that leather leaf. So if you don't like that leather leaf, it covers it all up. So I'm just going all the way around. Um, Vicki Williamson Seal asks if you ever work with gardenias. They were my, my sweet mama's favorite, she oh, says. Oh, and they smell so lovely, don't they? They smell so beautiful. Now, as a cut flower, I have not. If you've ever touched a gardenia, now, we always had beautiful plants of gardenias, and, um, and I always wondered how, looking back at some of the pictures, um, that people had. How in the world did they ever cut those gardenias? And maybe they cut them in bud state. But a gardenia is just like a hydra, I mean a magnolia. Um, and it's something to do with the oxidation. And when you touch it, the oil in your skin causes the flower to turn brown. And so I have never used either of those flowers as cut flowers. Now we have used preserved gardenias. Um, and they are so lovely, but they do smell so pretty. Like, I love it when you pass by a gardenia bush that has all those beautiful gardenias blooming. It makes me happy. And I know it makes you remember your sweet mama. Mm -hmm. There's nothing better than those memories. Um, Julie says, I love weeds. My mom loved wildflowers. I made her casket spray with tons of wildflowers. Oh, I bet it was so lovely. All right, there is our finished arrangement. Oh, Sue says I had gardenias in my wedding bouquet. It's such an amazing scent on our wedding day. So how in the world did they do it? Like, I, and I guess I've really never been taught um, to how to use them. But, oh, I bet it was lovely. Mm -hmm. I bet it was so, so mm -hmm. pretty. Chris says it's it's my first live. Woohoo! Yay, Chris, so glad you're here. I did pinch the fire out of my fan, but it didn't bleed, so that's good. Um, Louie on YouTube asks, how many spry cane used for that flower pot? I can try. Do what now? I'm, I'm not sure. Louie, rephrase your question. Um, cause I may, <laughs> just because I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Spry? Oh. This says our battery's running low. Thank okay. you, Miss Vicki. Um, how many spray cane used for that flower pot? Spray. I bet it's the spray paint. Do okay. you think that would be it? Okay. It's not even a um, can of spray. Is that? I don't. I'm not sure if that's what you're asking. But the spray paint, I didn't use very. Oof. I've used very little. Did we go dark? The battery went out, but I can try to change it real fast. Well, Unless... I think we're fixing to finish up. Are we finished? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay, guys, thank you. Uh, so they can't, it's completely they can, dark. They can hear you. They, they can hear us. You. Okay, thank y'all so much for being here. I appreciate it so much. I am going to go outside and take a picture of this pretty arrangement. So you guys over on YouTube, if you would like to come over to Facebook and see the finished product, we would love to have you over there. Um, guys, if you have not checked out our YouTube channel, please hop over there. Um, Owen um, posted yesterday a new video. And so if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, we'd love to have you there. Um, we do different videos there, um, about what, two to three sometimes four times a week. So we'd love to have you there. Guys, I hope y'all have a wonderful afternoon. Keep the questions coming. Even on YouTube, you can ask questions right under this video. And Victoria always goes back and checks and she helps me answer those questions. And the same here over on Facebook. Um, you can continue to ask questions and we are so happy to answer. Y'all talked really good today, asked mm -hmm. wonderful questions. Thank y'all, thank y'all. And welcome to all of the new um, um, people who caught our live today. We're so thankful for you. Do me a great big favor here on Facebook and on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. And on Facebook, do me a great big favor and sprinkle this video. That just means to share um, because that helps us to grow. Guys, I hope you have a wonderful evening. We will see